On June 12, 2023, SpaceX launched its eighth dedicated smallest rich share mission on Falcon 9 rocket. At a glance, this mission looks like any other of the company's rich share missions, except for the fact that inside Falcon 9's fairing by then, there is a special type of payload. It is a W Series, one spacecraft owned by Varda Space Industries. What sets it apart from the rest is that this spacecraft plays a key role in a $3.2 billion project promising to help Elon Musk on his journey colonizing Mars. So, it's been six months now. Have you ever wondered how it is now? And in the future, how will it change the way we colonize Mars? Everything started in October 2021. California-based startup Varda Space Industries signed a launch services agreement with SpaceX to launch its first spacecraft, namely W Series 1, on a Falcon 9 in early 2023 to demonstrate the ability to produce a wide range of materials in microgravity. According to the plan, the spacecraft would spend up to three months in orbit to test space manufacturing technologies with a focus on pharmaceuticals. During the first week of its mission, Varda Space Factory would undergo rigorous testing to ensure all systems operate flawlessly in the extraterrestrial environment. In the following week, Varda would conduct groundbreaking experiments with an old HIV AIDS drug called Ritonavir, repeatedly subjecting it to heating and cooling cycles to study how its particle crystallizes in microgravity. These experiments could unlock valuable insights into drug manufacturing and potentially leads to the development of more stable and effective medications. At the end of that mission, a recent tree capsule would return to Earth with the material produced in orbit. In fact, Varda has just launched its first spacecraft, the W Series 1, in June this year on SpaceX's Transporter 8 Redshear mission. While the experiments on the spacecraft are complete, the company has been unable to bring the capsule back yet as it works to secure approvals from the Federal Aviation Administration and the United States Air Force, which operates the Utah Test and Training Range, or UTTR, where the capsule will land. The company had been working to bring the capsule back in early September, but was unable to get an Air Force approval or an FAA recentry license. If you wonder why the Varda must seek an FAA recentry license for the latest mission, the answer is that this license belongs to a new set of regulations called Part 450. Those regulations are intended to streamline the process but, on the launch side, have been criticized by companies for being difficult. According to the pin tweet on their X on October 19, the spacecraft is still healthy across all systems and they continue to work with UTTR as a possible landing site for Mission 1. Launching W Series 1 is the first stage of the ambitious project of Varda collaborating with SpaceX to launch the first ever space factory into orbit. Varda Space plans on connecting at least three photon spacecraft built and launched by a rocket lab during the beginning of its development phase. In contrast to the International Space Station, Varda intends to use them for space manufacturing that does not require human intervention at all. Once production is complete, the craft will be equipped with re-entry capsules that will return the manufactured goods to Earth. In order for Varda to be valuable, it'll need to manufacture more than a few hundred kilos of materials in its first factory. It is for this reason that the business will be focused on high-value products that sell for high prices despite their limited market share. Furthermore, when manufacturing products in space, there is no chance of contamination. Thus, the products created will have high purity levels as well. Some examples include crystallized structures, semiconductors, medicinal components, and optic cables. Their space factory is said to be operational in less than 18 months following the W Series 1 spacecraft. The second and third spacecraft will be launched by the end of 2024, following an iterative approach building upon the lessons of previous missions. Delian Asperhoff, co-founder and president of Varda Space, said that the company wanted to take advantage of research done on the International Space Station as it prepared for its first mission. The IWS has done a wide variety of materials. We're not doing new science, he said. Companies working on the technologies needed for space manufacturing, the Delian said that he will give it a competitive advantage. But that engineering is not nearly as challenging 
as developing the re-entry capsule that will return the materials to Earth. And next, before we continue, if you found all of this information useful so far, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications bell so you never miss out on any of our upcoming latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now, let's go back to today's episode. It is safe to say that the collaboration between SpaceX and Varda is a win-win relationship in the long term. Varda executives pointed out that cooperating with SpaceX provided them with the most effective and reliable solution for launching the mission into orbit. Their financial strength is heavily reliant on the amount of money they spend on launch costs. According to Delian, is quite thrilled about this new partnership because it'll not only save them money, but it'll also allow them to expand their reach. Varda expects to spend approximately $7.5 million to launch an Electron rocket delivering a 200 kilogram payload into a sun-synchronous orbit. A launch driven by SpaceX, on the other hand, will only cost millions of dollars and will take place in under an hour. Varda Photon does not require a specific orbit for its mission, but it can be launched from a low Earth orbit with relative ease, making it suitable for rideshare launches. In contrast to communication and image satellites, which requires specific orbits, one of the most interesting tidbit, there is a special link between Varda Space and SpaceX. Varda's co-founder Will Brewey spent much of the time of the past decade working on SpaceX Cargo Dragon spacecraft. Many of a group of 16 best area space engineers as of 2021 are even ex-SpaceX employees. With the help of experience at Elon Musk's SpaceX, constant backing from Peter Thiel's founder fund, so although being founded less than two years ago, to build a space factory. The company has now managed to raise more than $50 million in a single year. Their working principle is mainly targeted towards launching space-made products more quickly, earlier. The IWS has also served as a platform for manufacturing products in space, but a dedicated space factory has never been set up. As per Delian, their company is different from other organizations. That deal within space manufacturing because they focus on how their products add value to Earth instead of only contributing to space. Varda's plan not only benefits the company itself, but also SpaceX. If Varda's space factory is operational, Elon's Mars colonization plan will also benefit from it. Imagine how convenient will things be when we have a factory that produces everything from medicine, food, and technology equipment components in space. Thanks to the short distance between the factory and Mars City, we can cut down on the delivery time and cost significantly. Yeah, that's so great, right? In terms of product quality, a microgravity environment is especially useful in manufacturing and developing. Take an example for this. The case of pharmaceuticals, microgravity is especially useful in developing the doses form of a drug, where the active chemical ingredient is formulated into a pill injectable or other product that can be safely administrated to patients. Here is why constraints often arise. Medicines that would be easier to take as a pill may only be successfully delivered as an injection. For instance, and in many cases, effective molecules fail to lack a valuable formulation without gravity's pull. However, you can formulate many drugs in new, more patient-compliant versions. It is not just about the form of the drug, it is also about the dosage. Instead of taking five pills a week, you might be able to take just one. Microgravity manufacturing may also reignite the development of a wall catalog of effective but forgotten drugs whose development has stalled on Earth. And that's a wrap for today's episode, everyone. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications bell. Your support is a driving force to continue delivering high-quality content. Thank you, and we're looking forward to see you in the next time. See you again.